Welcome to Electrified. It's your host, Dylan Loomis. Quick shout out to my newest patrons, Alex B and Dick L. Thank you for choosing to support the channel. A quick note from Friday on the Panasonic battery factory in Kansas that will mostly be supplying Tesla. Regarding those rate hikes, it didn't really take into account the fact that the potentially biggest solar farm in the nation may actually set up shop right near this factory. The mayor said it won't put any pressure on city services, so it'll allow us to grow, develop up the rest of the park without adding additional pressure on the infrastructure that we're building. I'm also being told that Panasonic has some land available south of where the current factory is being constructed. So if in the future they actually want to expand, they will have that option. And this factory is supposed to be a state of the art blueprint for any future factories in North America as well. Tesla told us they plan to use no rare earth elements in their next gen drive unit. And I just wanna share some context on what the rest of the industry is working on. This Japanese company, Proterial, has a prototype motor for EVs that use magnets that don't contain one rare earth, neodymium. Their prototype contains mostly ferrite, but they're aiming for meaningful adoption in EVs by the early 2030s. In case you're new, just wanted everybody to know that Tesla's no rare earth strategy that they plan to implement here in the next two to three years is definitely not widely available. Removing rare earths will reduce our dependence on China, but when it comes to battery recycling capacity year to date through June, this infographic is from Real Motion, China has a majority of the global capacity, which is why companies like Redwood are crucial to North America's future in the sustainable energy movement. Also from Real Motion, June was the largest month year to date for global battery storage deployments with 9.1 gigawatt hours of new capacity entering operation across 79 different projects or about 115 megawatt hours per project which is up 362 percent from june of last year yet again china is still making up a majority of the global deployments but when it comes to the top five best projects installed year to date one of them is in the united states in texas from five wells solar and storage with 518 megawatt hours of capacity there's not much about it online but i believe this one is in bell county texas and one more from Row Motion year to date through May when it comes to the top five BEVs sold globally, the Model Y and the Model 3 sit in first and second place, and it's really not that close. So far this year, 71% of EVs sold are actually full BEV and 29% are plug-in hybrid. Something to watch for future supercharger locations in New England in Canton, Massachusetts, Tesla's going to be rolling out a cyber canopy that'll have solar and Wi-Fi at this station as well. This 20 stall location, one of the largest in New England with lights under the canopy will actually be located right near Trillium Brewery. I won't read through all of these specific updates to the Spotify app, but if you're interested, this will be linked below. We touched on this last week, but this article has more detail. In case you're in any of these locations, Tesla will be offering free charging between the hours of 10 p.m. and 8 a.m. Friday through Monday off peak hours between July 21st and September 4th. I'm not sure a day like this will ever happen again. A positive Tesla article from Business Insider. It's really not worth going through. It just talks about the NAC situation and all of these other cars needing adapters and a lot of uncertainty given the ports over the next few years. But this positive Tesla article was kind of historic. There's plenty of chatter out there about the ability to get a Tesla Model 3 for less than $14,000 before taxes and fees in California. Just wanna say this is a fairly unique situation. Despite that, it's still awesome. And just a reminder, do your homework to find all of the available EV incentives in your state. Replying to Andre Karpathy talking about living in a bubble when he introduced ChatGPT to his parents, Elon said, same thing happens with Tesla FSD. I forget most people on earth have no idea cars can drive themselves. This is so true because most of my smart intellectual friends still don't know what Tesla FSD even is. Outside of our Tesla bubble, we are still so early. Retained earnings is really just cumulative net income in this case since Tesla's IPO. Just wanted to pass along this fun chart from James Stevenson and we can watch the end of this together. Ray for Tesla shared this video of an auto publication in China doing some testing with the Model Y in the Volvo XC in the snow. Long story short, the Model Y saw it 60 to 70 meters away, stopped no problem, 
the Volvo XC saw it at the last second and as you saw, didn't have time to stop. As you're about to see, the Volvo's brake lights don't come on until the last second. I'm not entirely sure what's going on here, but Holmars tweeted some pictures of a Cybertruck in a shop that has a wrap looking like an F-150. Looking at the Cybertruck on the left, of course it has the insert with the frunk removed. However, this picture does make it seem like the frunk has to be smaller than the one on the F-150 Lightning. I do think we need to withhold judgment though because making any final Final assumptions from an image like this is not a wise idea. And then we have this, the Cybertruck with the wrap, making it look like a more traditional pickup truck. I don't think it has to be specifically trolling the F-150 Lightning, but I could see why so many people think that. This of course makes for the third iteration of a Cybertruck wrap that we've seen out in the wild. So whether this wrap is going to be an option or it's just for trolling or it's just going to be a marketing stunt, I do think more importantly, the takeaway is maybe Tesla did make a trade-off to have a bit longer bed and ultimately the Cybertruck might have a little bit smaller frunk than the F-150 Lightning, but very curious to see an actual shot of the front. If you didn't notice, there was an employee sitting in the vehicle so they couldn't get better footage of inside the bed and inside the truck. Brad Sloan also had a nice spot of Giga Austin and two Cybertrucks in a transport vehicle. These are definitely unofficial numbers, but the Cybertruck reservation tracker has the total net reservation count over 1.9 million. So go ahead and pause and browse if you want, but the link to the document will be below. A lot of people talk about the physical benefits of exercise, but let's not forget about the mental aspect as well. On the days I don't feel like working out, but I find a way to do something, I feel so much better. Over time, it becomes a mental discipline and I can look back and remember how sun, exercise, and sweating have lifted me into a better mental state. And shout out to AG1, the sponsor of this episode, for helping me to recover and ensuring I get a baseline of daily nutrition even when I get off track with what and how I'm eating. There are over 75 vitamins, minerals, and probiotics in every serving of AG1 and it's independently tested so you can trust what's on the label is what you're actually getting. Ideally, I'll have mine in the morning after some zone 2 cardio, but what's nice is you can also have it in the evening without interrupting your sleep. So many of our health issues stem from deficiencies over a lifetime that we aren't even aware of, and for me, this is a way to close that gap. With 50 calories, 6 carbs, and less than 1 gram of sugar, the nutrition to calorie ratio is incredible. Plus, I think it tastes pretty good in water without anything added. So if you want to support the channel, and more importantly your health, check out drinkag1.com slash electrified linked below to get 5 travel packs and a 1 year supply of vitamin D3 K2 for free. Enjoy. Jeff Roberts shared an image from Giga Texas of 68 of 68 mega packs now being installed. So, you know, this is cool and all, but it really feels like a missed opportunity, not adding one more. You may recall there were some investigations into Giga Berlin for that hazardous waste material that Tesla may have been using and operating without authorization. Well, RBB24 reported that investigation has stopped. Apparently there's one suspect or employee who may still be under investigation, that one is temporarily stopped, but for the other five, they have been completely discontinued because of insufficient suspicion or evidence. According to the prosecutor's office, the use of hazardous materials was only planned for the short term and no specific environmental hazard had occurred or was expected. Tesla's 10Q dropped this morning and I just wanna highlight a few things from my first run through it. When it comes to Tesla's energy generation and storage sales, specifically the deferred revenue balance as of June 30th, 2023, 
customer payments amounted to $1.1 billion, mainly due to billings for milestone payments. This of course is an amount that Tesla will recognize as revenue in the future once those milestones are actually hit. And then Tesla said of that amount, they expect to recognize $207 million in the next 12 months. If you like doing earnings per share calculations, the latest diluted shares outstanding figure is 3.478 billion shares outstanding. Here's a snapshot of Tesla's debt. You can see the 37 current and seven long-term total recourse debt, totaling the 44 million that they shared in the slide deck. The differentiation recourse debt holds the borrower personally liable, whereas with non-recourse debt, the lender can only come after the borrower for the collateral that's backing the loan. Here we get a breakdown of Tesla's revenue by geography, and I'm going to focus on the six months ended June 30th, so the first half of this year. Doing the math in the United States for the first half of this year, 46.8% of Tesla's revenue came from the United States. Compare that to the first half of 2022, that number was 51.4%. More importantly, in China, as many people want to see Tesla slowly decouple from this region in the first half of this year, 22% of Tesla's revenue came from China. Compare that to the first half of last year when 23.6% came from China, so we're still heading in the right direction. Which of course means Tesla's revenue in the first half of this year from other international was 31.1% up from 24.9% over the same time period last year. So it's great, Tesla is still growing in the Chinese market, which of course is important, but it's growing faster in other international regions and reducing its dependence on China. In the first half of this year, Tesla's capital expenditures were $4.13 billion compared to just $3.5 billion during the same time last year, which is right on track with Tesla's guidance of seven to $9 billion of capex per year for the next two fiscal years years. Tesla having more cash isn't just great to have a war chest and peace of mind, they of course will earn more interest income with that cash. The money Tesla earned from interest income was $451 million in the first half of this year, up 397 million or 735% in the first half of this year compared to last year. So a bit more cash and much higher interest rates led to almost $400 million more in interest income during this time period. That alone is worth about 11 cents per share. From Reuters, Tesla representatives are set to meet India's commerce minister this month to discuss plans to build a factory to make the all new $24,000 car. Discussions are expected to center around setting up an EV supply chain and discussing land allotment for a factory. Tesla delivered almost 890,000 cars in the first half of this year, more than VW, BMW, Mercedes, and Porsche combined. This has the Germans playing second fiddle in their home market where Tesla remains the top EV brand. Just take it in. From an auto analyst near Hamburg, he said Tesla is still miles ahead of the German car makers in all major markets. Chevron is now considering opportunities to produce lithium that would be used in EV batteries, but Chevron has made it clear it has no plans to invest significantly in big wind or solar projects, saying the returns are low and the competition is too high. Ford's joint venture with CATL for that massive battery factory in Michigan is being investigated by US lawmakers. They're airing concerns that this joint venture could avoid restrictions on Chinese made EV components. The primary concern is that Ford will just be importing Chinese technology because the batteries would still qualify for the full federal EV tax credit without using US resources. Ford's also being accused of giving a number of the new jobs created by this plant to Chinese nationals who will work on behalf of CATL to implement and oversee the technology. On this one though, as we just saw with the TMC plant in Arizona for semiconductors, they need that specialized labor and in some cases, America just doesn't have it yet. With Ford's big aspirations to shift to LFP technology in the F-150 Lightning, this is definitely a thread to watch. GM Authority caught a glimpse of the upcoming 2024 Sierra Denali EV Edition 1. 
Reservations are already full, but you can still join a waitlist. This vehicle is supposed to be available for deliveries sometime spring 2024. But if GM's EV production so far is any indication, I would not get my hopes up for an on-time delivery. This is just a rendering, but the news is Rivian has plans to open up a brand new showroom in Austin. The Lucid Air Sapphire is now available for reservation, but the reservation isn't cheap. The refundable deposit is $25,000 for the car that has an MSRP around $250,000. From Tech AU, here we have the pricing for the Polestar 3 in Australia compared to the Model Y. Even before you look at the drive away cost, just the regular price, you can see significantly more expensive than the comparable Model Y. I'm rooting for Polestar, but in Australia, this is a very tough comparison given this pricing for the Polestar 3. I thought it was kind of funny. Of everything VW could copy Tesla for, one of the first ones they might be working on in this patent is removing the stocks, one of Tesla's more controversial decisions. So VW might be working on putting things like the turn signals right on the steering wheel with buttons that could be physical, haptic, or both. On LinkedIn, Tesla shared a new two minute video of the collision team, pretty cool video they just talk about incentives for the employees and what tesla does differently they had some music though so it'll be below if you want to check it out don't forget to check out ag1 links below if you're interested you can find me on twitter at dylan loomis 22 hope you guys have a wonderful day please like the video if you did and a huge thank you to all of my patreon supporters